Hey, welcome to the Pharmacy Residency Podcast. Remember the Pharmacy Podcast Network. If you need one-on-one help with getting a residency, uh, go to residency.teachable.com. I'm Tony Guerra. I'll be happy to help you one-on-one, uh, especially with letters of intent. That's kind of my, my thing and uh, kind of figuring out what it is you want to do. Uh, I wanted to talk about the recent surge in pharmacy school uh, acceptances, and it's not all bad news. Uh, let me kind of explain why. So the when I say the acceptance rates have skyrocketed, I am not trying to be you know glib about this. It's just that in 2016, 2017, it was 81.4, and then it kind of creeped up to 82.7, another 1%, and then creeped up to 82.9, barely a move of 0.2. But now it's jumped almost 4% to 86.8% and then another almost 2% to 88.6. So acceptance rate to pharmacy school is likely to hit 90% um, this year uh, if these rates continue, uh, just adding uh, 1.4%. Now you'd say, okay, oh my gosh, now we're going to have this flood of pharmacists. But that is actually possibly not true. Um, For whatever reason, the number of accepted applicants has stayed level around that 13,000 mark uh, up till the 2017-2018 cycle. But then after that, each year consistently, uh, schools have lost another 500 students uh, each year of the accepted applicants. And uh, this doesn't uh, really feed to matriculation and all those things. How many, how long, you know, how many of the students last or make it through, uh, things like that. But what it does tell us is that a lot of things are going to happen if we have fewer graduates. One, it's going to be easier to get a residency. Uh, Residency positions have continued to move up. And uh, if there are fewer applicants, uh, then it should get a little bit easier to get a residency. Uh, But certainly the the top residencies are always hard to get. I mean, you know, uh, even when uh, the applications went down to Harvard, they're at like a 4.6% acceptance rate. So uh, so those uh, residencies, you know, the, the Yales and the Mayos and UNCs and so forth are still going to be hard to get, uh, but it is going to be a lot easier to get a residency if that's something you want to do. The second thing is it's going to be easier to get a job. We can see right now that there are a lot of open positions and you're like, well, why did that happen? And uh, one of the big drivers seems to be that uh, these pharmacists that were nearing retirement that we're trying to stick it out until you know things got better well things got exponentially better with the stock market uh, at continues to you know hit new highs i think it's around 35,000 uh, with the dow and with with those huge huge numbers uh, that may have kind of pushed them over and said hey i've got plenty to retire uh, we've got a paid off house uh, we're done uh, another thing is that there's a wave of uh, missing applicants. That is, uh, there are just not enough young people applying to college uh, for all the positions that are available. So even though the acceptance rate has gone all the way to almost 90%, that is, as a student applies to schools, somebody's going to take them uh, 90% of the time, uh, they pharmacy schools have still lost about 500 uh, students or accepted applicants each year over the last three years. And uh, what we're looking at uh, with the current numbers, and it's tough in October to really look at the numbers and and say that that's uh, definitive of the year, but we see a continued downward trend. So it looks like the combination of retiring pharmacists, those that are moving on to other jobs because other positions are available, uh, 4 million people quit. The quit rate's the highest it's been since like 2000. Uh, so it's a huge quit rate. And pharmacists are basically saying, look, you know, the money just isn't worth it. You know, maybe I have these loans and, and whatever, but you know, there's another position I can get and some similar uh, salary with much greater flexibility and I'm gonna take it. Uh, so as you have this group of, this aging group leaving, a lack of applicants coming in, uh, I expect over the next four years that it's going to be easier to get a residency. It's going to be easier to get, make sure that you have a job after uh, you graduate. 
And I think that eventually, eventually, uh, the cost of going to school will actually go down. I've seen a few schools uh, drop their tuition significantly. Not a significant number of schools doing it, but a few schools dropping their tuition by a significant amount. And you can see by that, you know, kind of 90% acceptance rate that uh, unfortunately your classmates uh, as they go in are really going to have a number of that really struggle. And especially since uh, the PCAT is only required in now a quarter of the schools where it was 75% of the schools. Uh, that means that there's really no assessment. And, and maybe I'm biased because I am an English major for undergrad, uh, but there is really no assessment of that those so important communication skills when it comes to uh, being able to read, write, and uh, communicate clearly uh, the things that you need to uh, in that interprofessional team. So just kind of letting you know these are what the numbers are they just came out uh, but the acceptance rate is close to 90 percent now uh, but each year of the last three years uh, pharmacy schools have lost uh, f almost 500 or about an average of 500 ap accepted applicants a year and it looks like there's going to be a further loss as this continues and uh, i think that what's going to happen is is that there's the rise of the pharmacy technician, as it were, uh, but we're seeing that pharmacy technicians are getting the sign-on bonuses as well, and good for them. Uh, they certainly deserve uh, that because uh, they are uh, <laughs> they are the bedrock. Uh, you know, going in uh, as a pharmacist, that you know, good techs make the day happen, uh, and uh, not having them is absolutely brutal. Uh, but you're also seeing forced better hours. Uh, we go to the pharmacy and we see that it's closed at 6 or it's closed at 7 uh, because they don't have the staff to keep it open late. And what's happening is, is parent people are going back to their you know, families and, and being able to spend time with them. And I maybe take that for granted now because I don't work nights and weekends anymore in academia. But I certainly empathize uh, with those that are missing those weekends. But... We might see it go back to the whole, uh, you know, uh, maybe what we used to call the target hours, 9 to 7, Monday through Friday, and then like a little bit on Saturday. Uh, and maybe that'll be the thing with a, you know, one 24-hour store every once in a while in the metro. Uh, but uh, as we kind of move along, you know, I'll keep you up to date, but uh, it looks like things uh, will get a lot easier for the students that are in school. But unfortunately, those students are being accepted at such a high rate that it may not be easy for them uh, to complete those courses uh, because uh, some are being accepted that maybe uh, are not uh, as qualified as we'd like. But uh, unbelievably, the data doesn't <laughs> the data doesn't support uh, a reduction in the quality. Uh, the grades have actually gone up a little bit marginally. And there was one thing that I saw that there's actually one fewer schools in the FarmCast. And that's the first time that's ever happened. The FarmCast has always increased the number of schools that are with it. So whether it decided not to use the FarmCast or it was removed uh, because of accreditation issues, I don't know. But, um, you know, uh, it's... It's looking good to be a pharmacist uh, in the years to come, especially as we hit 2023, 2024, 2025, uh, as the data show that there are just going to be fewer coming out of school and many more leaving the profession. All right, if you need my help uh, getting that residency that you really want, residency.teachable.com, or just give me an email, tonythepharmacist at gmail.com. I'm Tony Guerra. Hope you enjoyed the show.